on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and family from around the world, I'm going to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. And more importantly for you, other than our friendship, he also happens to be my personal crypto mentor. If there is a cryptocurrency question that I have, and there are often, I go to this guy, Joseph Legendary Musso. Now, are there smarter people in the world than us in crypto? No, but it's okay. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine with being the best in the world. It's all right. But in all reality, uh, our goal here tonight is to, to provide some real value. This is 100% for free. There's going to be no sales pitch in this webinar. I love free webinars. I love sales pitches. You guys know me. You guys know Joseph. We love money. We love currency. But we're not here for that. We just really want to pour in value into you and into your assets. All right? So this was uh, a very quick, uh, I know, a webinar that we didn't get a lot of time to market. But if you're watching this in a recording or you're watching this from wherever in the interwebs, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to share my screen. Give me 18 seconds to do that. Max 18 seconds, probably more like three seconds. Boom. There we go. Type in a four if you can hear me okay, just to make sure everyone is ready to rock. Michael says, gents, I love Joseph's background. Yeah, he, he always has the best. He has the best everything. <laughs> he has the best everything. All right. So we're talking how to protect your crypto. And I got to talk. I got I to gotta bring the man in. The myth, the legend, the crypto whisper. What's up, Joseph? How's it going? Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, there has been, you know, we've, uh, you've mentored people. I've mentored people who have uh, had some really unfortunate things happen to them. And uh, we talked offline and we said, you know, we should just kind of tell people like, look, this is, this is how you can protect yourself from these mistakes and how you can kind of keep your currency where it belongs in the wallet, right? So where it's safe and sound. Yep. Yep. So again, guys, this is not an investment advice webinar. This is really a protection of your investment advice webinar. Uh, but at the same time, don't do anything stupid with your money. Like answer a phone call from Coinbase and give them your login info. Tip one, don't do that ever. Mm. Don't, don't give me your login information. Don't give Joseph your login <laughs> Don't give anyone over the phone your login information to anything ever, ever. Type of one if you're cool with that. Like that, that should just forever be it, right? The IRS is not going to call you <laughs> ever, right? They're going to send you some, some letters. So, so the reason we're bringing that up at the onset of this is because that has happened to some individuals, right? Um, there, there'll be a box that'll pop up. We'll get, we'll get to that. We're going to get to that. Okay, we're gonna get to that. But there, here's the disclaimer. So here's the most three common ways to lose your crypto. Joseph, I forgot my crypto password. What do I do? Oh man, well, um, tough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. But uh, so, but I lost it. <laughs> there's a way you can recover it. But if you lose that too, then you're in trouble. So every single wallet, whenever you set it up and you set up a, an actual password into it, it gives you this 12 word like seed phrase. So they call it. And this 12 word seed phrase is basically uh, equivalent to the encryption code to unlock your wallet so that you can reset your password. If you have your 12 seed phrase gone, burned up in a fire or whatever, you didn't actually save it like you're supposed to, and you lost your password and you can't remember it, then your crypto is locked forever, forever and ever and ever. Now, have you had that happen to you? Uh, do I want to admit that I've had it happen to you? <laughs> don't, don't I, admit I have it. had it happen to me, but it was um, it was because of an update and it, it corrupted the, the file. This is before the tech that we have now. Um, wallets were very, very dangerous. So you could have a ton of crypto in those wallets and you had to do all these crazy updates that weren't, you didn't just click a button. You had to download files off the internet, put them in specific folders, make sure everything was lined properly yep. and then reload the wallet and then pray that the wallet resyncs and connects and you're good to go. Yeah. Like, so that's the only time that I've ever had that situation happen where the password was corrupted, but thankfully I had my seed phrase. So I was able to recover the, that wallet and uh, get back into it and recover that crypto. 
Yep. That's the closest and, I've ever come. And for me, it was a uh, similar, exactly everything that Joseph just mentioned, except on a computer that I lost. And it wasn't a, a, a gargantuan amount of Bitcoin, but it was enough at this stage that I'm upset that it's gone. Um, and yes, that's, that's happened for sure. That's happened to individuals. But keep in mind, what we're definitely not saying, my friends, is crypto is bad because it's harder right now to potentially manage. There are scams and ways to lose your money for all eternity, <laughs> okay? There are people who are malicious and want to take what they don't have. Just because it's crypto does not mean that people are using it for drugs and bad things that hasn't been used for all other currencies since mankind has created currencies. So just keep that in mind. It is a little bit more digital and that might scare some individuals, but once you understand the safety that we're gonna be going over, there are very, very easy ways to protect yourself. This one is one that happens very, way too often and it's super simple to avoid. This one has never happened to me personally, but talk about sending to the wrong wallet, Joseph. So essentially you have this really long uh, alphanumeric key that you have to either copy and paste or use a QR code and scan. Uh, and you need to put it into another, uh, basically your out, your outgoing uh, portion of your wallet so that you can send uh, crypto from one area to the next. The, the challenge is if you, and I've had this, I've had some people do this. If you manually type it, um, you can, oh. <laughs> if what? you manually type it, you could accidentally put it in a capitalization or an undercase for an A, um, or you switch two of the alphanumerics over, but you still have the right amount of digits, and you just sent, uh, you know, 150 or 1500 Bitcoin to a random wallet. Now, if you do that, can you get it back? Not unless you know where that wallet is and who that wallet controls. You can um, hope that it's on a wallet exchange and contact the exchange and say it was a mistake and see if you can get it that way. Uh, but, you know, these, the thing with crypto is it's not very forgiving when you make a mistake. So yes. there are a couple ways, like best practices that you can help with that situation. The best thing that I can think of for best practice is send a very, very, very small amount of crypto to the wallet that you think it's going to go to, even if it costs you a little bit more to do it, it is smarter for you to do that and eat the cost of the $3, $5 charge to send it than it is for you to send the entire thing and then send it to the wrong address. And now you just lost all that crypto. Step so. two, never manually type it. Yep. That will be another good step. Uh, step three, read the numbers and letters back to you. Yep. All right. So I have Especially a you're dyslexic like Jeremy and me. <laughs> yes, correct. So I have a rule in my trading plan that says I have to say every order aloud before I place it. So if I'm sending money in this, and Joseph and I just did this transaction, I sent him some money just recently. When I did that, I read the wallet out loud one time and then i did the very last six digits three times just to make sure everything was copacetic i copied it i pasted it reread aloud make sure there wasn't any spaces right and then we were all good to go now the thing is a lot of people joseph are afraid of having their wallet id out and available to the public is that a bad thing to openly display your wallet well, it's always out in, in the public, whether you like it or not. No one just knows who that wallet is attached to. Now, if you send your wallet address publicly and you say, hey, this is my wallet address and this is where uh, this is where I put all my coins. Now, somebody can look, anyone can look and see how much you have in there. Um, but what you can do is you can generate a random wallet address and you can do that with any wallet. You can generate a random wallet address and send that to somebody else. Um, and then they can use that random wallet address to send it to your main wallet, but they, you can still technically track it. Like there's no way to untrack that. Um, it's just part of the, the way the, the, the network was built. It was built on anonymity, but it also is built on the idea that you can see where the transactions go on the ledger from A to B to Z to, you know, that's how people can actually uh, hunt down uh, scam artists and see where they go and then blacklist that deal with all the exchanges by saying, hey, 
uh, I got scammed out of, uh, you know, uh, to Bitcoin because they installed some sort of encryption software on my computer and they told me that I had to pay them to Bitcoin or um, I wasn't going to be able to decrypt my computer and those are all my files of my my family. So that can happen. And then what you would do is you would report that to obviously the authorities. And then you would report that to all the exchanges saying, hey, look, this is a situation that happened. I was scammed with ransomware and this is actually stolen money, um, ransomed money. And you can uh, have the exchanges blacklisted. Got it. So speaking of ransom money fans, here's some scams uh, that are extremely popular. The most uh, popular one, in my opinion, I'll, I'll hear some from some other people, I'm sure and we'll read them aloud and make sure that we kind of walk through. But here's the most popular one. You will get a pop up on your computer, uh, computer, Wi Fi browser um, that says, hey, call this number, your wallet is at risk, or something to that extent hey, you can't log in anymore because your wallet is corrupted or hey, you're, you're going to lose all of your money unless you call this number immediately, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that, is, <laughs> that is a scam, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you have to, if a thing pops up on your computer and you call that particular number because it says something and then they start asking you very specific information, that is a scam. Number one, as we've mentioned before, Coinbase I have millions of dollars in Coinbase. They've never, have they ever called you, bro? No, never. I've never gotten a phone call ever. From right? any of the exchanges I've used. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coinbase or no one will ever call you. Simple as that. Now, what's very beautiful and Cedric, thank you for bringing this up. This is extremely, extremely important. They will do this via text message as well. So I, I, I'm sad it already took me 12 minutes since this webinar to bring that up. But if you get a link in a text message from a number that you do not recognize, even if that person says it's me or it's Joseph, start trying to verify that information before you click on the link. Okay, type in a one if that makes tons of sense to you. So before you click on that link, Try to have a conversation with that person to figure out if they're actually, if it is, if they claim that it's me or your mother or, or, or your best lost friend who hasn't seen you since high school, right? If they're like, hi, hey, Kathy, it's, it's Rhonda. How are you? It's been forever. Uh, click on this link so that you and I can connect via social media. Don't click on that link, right? Like, oh, cool, Rhonda, how's it been? What, right, start communicating with that person. That's much, much less damaging than clicking a link because oftentimes once you click that link, you are agreeing to terms that you do not want to agree to. Yeah, so there's also phishing emails. I've seen a lot of them come up and they look really good. Now, a phishing email essentially is an email that looks like the business that um, you do business with. And they use the same logo, they use the same font, they even use some of the same verbiage. And even the link looks slightly similar, like it'll say coinbase.au.org or something, and it'll, instead of coinbase.com. And it, there'll be just slight little nuances that you'll see. And people in IT, we educate uh, individuals that we work with all the time about phishing emails, because it happens on everything, not just on crypto, it happens with your bank account. Everything. everything. So th those are things to really pay attention to. If there's a random email from your exchange that says, hey, click here, we need to log in to fix something with your account, otherwise you're gonna lose everything. I can guarantee you 100,000% that is fake, that is fraudulent, that is not real. Uh, they're never, ever, ever, ever going to do that to you, ever. You're not gonna get a random phone call either. Um, you know, If your phone for whatever gets hacked or you find out you put in your phone number because you're thinking you're getting involved in some crypto thing. And then they're calling you because now you're in a system saying, okay, this person has crypto. It's very possible they have Coinbase. And they're saying, hey, I work for Coinbase and your wallet needs to be transferred from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro or vice versa, or you're going to lose everything in the new server update that we're going to do. And we want to protect your money. Here's the thing that you guys need to understand. Coinbase 
uh, Kraken, Binance, all of those have wallets that are still on the network of your cryptocurrency. So whatever server updates they do will have none, no effect at all, none, zero effect on the wallet and the information that's on there, none. So knowing that, knowing that there's mm. no possible way that even if Coinbase completely crashes that your data will be messed with because it's sitting on the network of the cryptocurrency and it's like a read only mode for Coinbase, read only mode for Kraken that you can access through their stuff. But if their servers go down, your stuff is still there. It's safe. It's not going anywhere because it's on the actual crypto network, it's not on Coinbase. I think that's something else that really confuses people. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I've, I've been a nine if that was worth the price yeah. of admission alone. Just hearing that statement from someone who knows a lot about that information. I think that was valuable. <laughs> Thanks, man. No um, problem. Like, I just, frustrates me when this happens to people it does it does and that, that's the reason why we're here team again just to pour in some light and love into everyone's life because this is going to happen in any industry okay this happens in craigslist this happens with anything guys like people want to take your money there's bad people out there sorry i wish everyone was like me and joseph but they're not now here's another very popular scam without going into there's millions guys there's there's literally millions of scams a very very popular one is there will be a uh, deep fake video or website or YouTube stream and uh, with, a, with a celebrity. And that celebrity will be matching donations and wallet transfers. And the person will be matching or returning more money if you send it to them. <laughs> I almost fell for one of these. A few years ago because it was done so well but essentially if <laughs> never send your money anywhere they're not sending you more that's the that's the scam okay they're not going to send you more money it, just because it's it's brad pitt and brad pitt's like yeah guys i just got into this really cool coin and what we're doing right now is incentivizing first investors if you invest right now since i have so much money i'll give you 10 percent return immediately no, they won't. That's not Brad Pitt. Or if it is Brad Pitt, he's not actually saying that. And if it even is Brad Pitt, he's not going to give your money back. It's a scam. So to kind of put that in perspective, like scams have been going on for, for years, for generations, for thousands of years, actually. This, this is not an uncommon thing to happen. And to put some perspective on this, do you guys remember the Nigerian Prince scam? <laughs> where you would you would send ten thousand dollars to nigeria and this prince would be able to unlock his account and then he would send you a hundred thousand dollars back classic classic literally the new nigerian print scam same thing yeah that, that but it's true you know it's true like hey you give me money and then that money will be able to help me do this thing and then after i do this thing you get more money back Except instead of Nigerian princes, they're using real people like Vitalik and they'll take an interview that he did and deep fake the website and you'll click on the link and you go to the website, which looks like YouTube, but it's not, right? It'll be like YouTube and the E will be kind of crooked. <laughs> and it'll be like YouTube with a bunch of U's, B E dot, dot C A or whatever. And it'll just be an interview that Vitalik did right under it. Like Vitalik will give you, right? It's a scam, guys. Now, Here's the other one uh, that's, again, less popular, but I'll bring it up since I have Legend here himself uh, out in public, on video. It's a rare thing, team, <laughs> is the um, broker, um, MLM, cloud mining scams, mm. all right? So essentially, you get a... Uh, you get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Guaranteed return either daily or weekly. Something that seems ridiculous, right? They're like, all right, 3% a week guaranteed compounding. Yep. I have seen thousands of people fall for this because it's like, yeah, sounds great. Like I want more money, please. I mean, who doesn't want 3% a week? Joseph wants 3% a week. I want 3% a week. But when they use this word guaranteed, and then they start talking about what you want to do is put your money in and then refer some friends and then have them sign up under your link 
right? Obviously it's an MLM. They're not getting, you're not getting any money. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul type of a situation. And that was called, what was the most popular one, Joseph? You remember, or you can read my mind? The Ponzi scheme one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the well, big there's, there's, Oh yeah. The big connect. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Big, big connect. <laughs> it's going to be Bitcoin. <laughs> so big connect uh, friends was hundreds of millions of dollars. I think it was like a $700 million market cap in its prime. And within three months, it was at zero. It went bankrupt and hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars evaporated in weeks. And that's because people would fall for this MLM cloud mining scam, or essentially you put money into their account, right? And they promise you a return and they will, you'll get your 3% return weekly on your money. And then what they do every single time, ask you for more. Like, hey, this has been going so well. You sure you don't want to put in like 20? I mean, you've got 3% for the last six weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, oh, you're right. <laughs> Let me put in 100. And then that's gone. You're, goodbye. Your money's gone. So that second upgrade, when you get to that second tier, you're just getting absolutely hosed. Um, any other ones that you want to talk about here, Joseph? Yeah, because this has been uh, asked a lot and uh, it's nice to be able to just refer to someone to a video now instead of having to say this over and over again. Let's talk about farming. So there's a thing called coin farming where the, you lock up your coins for X amount of time and they, they promise you 40, 60, 80, 100%, 500%, 1,000% return on your money. And um, as long as you keep your money locked up, then you'll keep making money. But the moment that you try to take your money out, then um, you get hit with all these negative, uh, negative like fallbacks. So if you wanna take a, any portion of that out, it ends up being this negative return on your investment over and over and over again. And uh, I've seen it happen often. So what, what will happen is people will take 10 ETH and they're like, oh sweet, I'm making uh, you know, a one, one ETH every two months. Yep. And then they try to pull that ETH out of the compounded wallet. And as soon as they try to pull it out, they only get like 10% of that one ETH because they're violating the terms or whatever that, that they deem. Or what will happen is as soon as you pull it, try to pull any of your ETH out, your entire amount that you were investing in just disappears. And then they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because well, here's the thing that I, I want people to know. This is a very, very important thing for you to think about. Cryptocurrency are keys, they're security keys, right? So they're encrypted keys that only the person who has the wallet has access. The moment you connect that wallet to another place to offer somebody else access to your keys, you're exposing your keys, which means they're no longer yours. And bottom line, I'm gonna really break this down to just one sentence, not your keys, not your crypto. Love it. So would that include like, like uh, hmm. Google Chrome or Safari wallet extensions like Trust Wallet or MetaMask yeah. or Sushi Swap, Pancake Swap. Yeah, so there there is risk in trying to to associate or connect. Those are called decentralized exchanges: the Sushi Swap, Pancake Swap, Uniswap. Um, there's a little bit less risk because they are usually tied to other exchanges on on a larger scale. However, there are some random exchanges that nobody's ever heard of before where people will randomly connect their trust wallet or their MetaMask, and they'll try to swap from some random coin to another one, and then all of their money is gone. Mm, that's the big one, guys. <laughs> Replay that and listen to this, and we'll, we'll mention that again. That's a huge one. Random exchange. Oh, you want to get into the squid game token coin.era.org? You sure? Okay, because it's up 47,000% in the last four hours. <laughs> you want to get in, right? Connect to this wallet really fast. Game over. Gone. It's gone. It is gone. Because you just it doesn't matter if it's trust wallet, MetaMask. What you're doing is when you start connecting and you're starting to put it to do like a cool swap because you want to be awesome and then grow your whatever account at 400,000 X in eight hours. Team, those... Uh, th those graphs that you're being shown are false, right? It's on the internet, okay? Just because something's up 80,000%, it's probably not. They probably want you to get to buy the thing that's up 80%, right? Because they show you some graph that's been available for five minutes that you haven't done any research on at all. You connect your wallet to it and then 
Bye bye. Is that right, Joseph? Did I get close? Yeah, as soon as you click connect and you authorize your wallet to connect to whatever that exchange is, and you hit the send button, you have now you're at the mercy of whatever that exchange is. So if that exchange is not legit, then you just gave away whatever you you hit send on. Yeah. How do you, I, it's a little off topic, but how do you determine a legitness of a uh, exchange? Uh, research. Um, oh, shoot. What, what is it connected to? How long has it been in the existence? Does it have a community following? Uh, does that community following back it? How long has that community following been in existence? Is it something that was just slapped together or the whole, are there a whole bunch of bots associated with that community following or are there actual people that have said, Hey, this is something that works. Um, does that decentralized exchange actually represent something, uh, another exchange like pancake swap is actually connected to Binance and therefore it's on the same network. Um, you know, Uniswap and sushi swap don't really have that, but they do have a huge community and they're they're well known and you can find them on community sites like reddit and just go through and look hey guys how legit is this and if you get a whole bunch of bots trying to you know say hey connect this for free blah 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 or just, you can just tell if you're talking to a bot and or, rather than a human being when you're on these things just do your due diligence on that and do the research on it google the heck out of it look through all of it look on um coin market cap and see if there's any information there um type in uniswap slash scam question mark there you go. Uh, Ryan says, does Joseph use it? If Joseph uses it, then that should be fine. <laughs> That's a good point. Like, cause I do a fair. lot of research on this. It's fair. Um, so, so Joseph, are you saying just to clarify that before I make 80,000% return the next three hours, I should probably do some research before I YOLO all my money into a random exchange. Absolutely. Dang Always it. research. Ah, research first. I just wanted to like 900 X my net worth by by th th three o'clock this afternoon though. We'll just give it to Joseph and Jeremy and we'll donate it to a charity. <laughs> and at least then it will go somewhere useful rather than mm. to some scam artist. Yeah, that's true guys. So again, the whole, the FOMO thing is real. Um, I, I can make, and, and yes, I've traded some slightly random coins from here and, and here and there, but I do generally stay, and, and Joseph uh, can, can vouch for me on this. I generally stay in the bigger boy pool of the crypto world. But if you do want to, let's call it gambling for a better sense of the term. If you want to gamble, right, do so with extremely small amounts of money, really, really practice, really do your research. If you want to trade KuCoin because it's out and, you know, they have an exchange, you're like, oh, KuCoin is going to go up because Binance coin went up. Put a little bit of a small amount of it and just practice, right? Try, make sure it's comfortable. And you can have multiple wallets. Right, you can have some money in cold storage if you want to. Yeah. So th that and that's something that we can talk about, um, you know, as well for just safety reasons. Sure, let's if do it. If you are in the situation where you have a large sum of money, you know, Jeremy, millions of dollars on Coinbase. I don't do that. I have a certain amount that I have on Coinbase, and the rest I put in a cold storage wallet. And I actually, ironically enough, I have it locked up in a safety deposit box in a bank. Because for me, the only good thing a bank is, is a, is a good place to store your crypto when it comes to safety deposit. <laughs> <laughs> so cold storage, what is that? So cold storage is basically you can buy these specialized wallets and you can talk to me if you want like specific information, but uh, nano wallets are the most valuable right now. And the ones that I've used like the nano ledgers, um, what, what they are is they're like a USB wallet. So you have a little USB stick like this, All right? So you have a USB stick. I don't know if you can see it on my camera very well. Let no, just... it kind of blurs out. There you go. USB stick like this. And you just plug that into your computer and you put all of your crypto on that USB stick. And then you take that USB stick offline and you put it in a safety deposit box, you lock it up and then you're good. Then no one can scam you out of it. No one can call and say, hey, transfer it because the only way you can access that wallet is if that USB stick is plugged back into a computer because it needs the internet in order to uh, be accessible. But the cool thing is, is it doesn't matter if that wallet is online or offline, the ledger still shows that you have that cryptocurrency. So that cryptocurrency is there and safe indefinitely, even if you don't plug it in for the next five years, it's still there. Yep, and that's where you can have, again, passwords and seed phrases that we're mentioning team. Like when you plug in, each one of these wallets will have that available for you. So um, how, how easy would you say that this is to put some crypto in cold storage? 
it, it's very easy. It's not hard. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty walk you through process. Yeah, the, when you plug it in, Michael and Dan, they'll it the ledger, the thing that you purchase will they'll give you instructions. They'll say do this, go here. So if you want to move money from Coinbase into the wallet, it's extremely simple because all you're doing is that's what that's what that's what's awesome about crypto, right? If you know the way it works and you know, okay, here's my wallet ID, here's my wallet ID. I need to move it from. Coinbase, which is called hot storage or online storage into cold storage, AKA a USB offline. Literally it's an address change. You verify the address multiple times, right? We've mentioned that already and you whoop, send it and you're done. So someone asked, well, what happens if it fails? Um, so the cool thing about these nano ledgers are as long as you have that, now I'm just gonna preface this. I have two safety deposit boxes. I have one safety deposit box that has my, uh, my, my USB sticks in it. And another one at another location has my seed phrase in it. And as long as you have that 12 word seed phrase, you can still unlock your wallet. They will send you a new nano ledger, uh, brand new out of the box. And then you can say, Hey, I need to recover my wallet from my old one. And it will say, Hey, I need that 12 word seed phrase. I'm like, oh, okay, go to the bank, grab the 12 word seed phrase plug it all in and it will re-download all that information because it will unlock the key to my wallet so that I can access it on a new ledger, download everything to the new ledger, and then there you go. I now can take that new ledger, put it back in the safety deposit box, dep uh, safety deposit box, and then I'm good to go. Love it. And there's some great points in the chat pane. Be very cautious of where you buy these. Yes. That's also, that also can be a scam. Buy so, only from the website. Buy only from, yeah, correct. Buy only from the website, their website. You can also buy these in person <laughs> if you don't want to go, you know, if you don't want to go uh, online and purchase them. <clears throat> um, I actually bought mine, uh, I think it was Best Buy. Yeah, pretty sure it was Best Buy. So when you're talking about um, purchasing them, like don't, again, guys, you can get scammed with anything, right? Yeah. It could be crypto. This could be baseball cards. They could all be fake. It could be anything at all. So always a little bit of research. Start with a small amount of money. Uh, full disclosure, Joseph sent me something the other day that like, I think it was earlier this morning, like, hey, buy some of these, right? So I'm gonna go do some research on them. And then the first purchase I'm gonna do, $100 to $200. Gonna look at it, get it, touch it, feel it, understand it, explain it. And then I'm gonna start putting a little bit more into it. I trust Joseph explicitly, but the things themselves are new. We don't know much about them. I need to get some info into them. So that's the way you should do with everything if you are a relatively new to that environment. Now, this is a very good point and it's an easy point, but Joseph, can you stake your coins if they are on your wallet? So Ledger actually offers staking technology with some of their new wallets. Uh, so the, yes, that is very possible for you to actually stake in your cold storage. It's a cool, neat little thing feature that they started adding. And another thing that makes it even more valuable, because those of you who are like, well, what is staking? Uh, staking is how you can earn passive income on crypto. And we actually talk about that in the uh, cryptocurrency course through RLT. Um, but I'll, you know, I digress, just letting you know that. Um, I'll let you know really quickly, this is the idea. When you put your coins and uh, lock them into, into the network, the network uses them at, that uses the com computation power of that wallet to solve the block. And I don't want to get too complicated into that, but basically what it does is it solves a mathematical equation and then it rewards you with more cryptocurrency. So literally storing your cryptocurrency in a cold storage wallet, putting it in the bank and uh, uh, putting it for safekeeping, you can actually earn passive cryptocurrency income doing that at the same time. There's no negative side of staking other than you don't sell it right away because it's locked into the wallet. Yep. So like if you're having it for a period of time and you're like, okay, cool. I want to earn more Cardano or Tezos or Cosmos or Polkadot, Polkadot or Cosmos, maybe Cosmos or Polkadot. Like if you bought those and you want to stake them, maybe Polkadot or Cosmos, and you want to be in those long-term and just leave it alone, you can do that. Yeah. Um, now here's a good question. Martin said, do these USB devices ever fail? <clears throat> um, they can, but kind of as Joseph mentioned, if they do, you actually have a support system to kind of go back on and they, they'll, they'll help you out, but it's very, very rare. I mean, I haven't had a USB person fail. No, I haven't either. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think Michael asked, do you create the seed phrase when transferring? No, you create the seed phrase when you uh, 
create your wallet and you add your password in. Like it's part of the security portion of it. And it's on every single encryption wallet that, that exists. They want you to have that seed phrase as your backup and they want you to write it down um, and then store that in a, in a safe location. And that seed phrase is your password. So, you know, if that ever gets stolen, your crypto is as good as gone if they know what they're doing. So make sure you're putting it in a safety deposit box in another bank, um, because to me, that's the safest way to handle that. And if you ever need it, you can just go to the bank, unlock it, and then there you go. Yeah, love it. Um, Justin said, do we need one cold storage USB? Any limit per device or do you need to have multiple? Great question. I have multiple. Um, I have a specific limit and I don't want to mention that on the webinar, but there's a certain specific uh, dollar value limit that I'll put on each one. Um, so I have several and I have several in several different deposit boxes and several banks. Now, you don't need to though, correct, Joseph? You can have as much No, you, as you don't want. need to. You can put everything in one wallet. Yep. Um, but here's the thing, like everyone can see that wallet the information. It's, it's there. So if, if I were to ever send anything from that wallet to somebody else, then they would know how much crypto I have. And I just don't like that. So my way to combat that is to separate and have it in multiple wallets. So no one knows exactly how much crypto I have in, in any given time. Yep, great question. Also, uh, this is one we haven't talked about tons yet, but it's here on the slide. So 2FA, what does that stand for, Joseph? And should people do it? Uh, Two-factor authentication, it's not a matter of should, it's an absolute must. You must do this. This is not a, a can, should, will, this is a must. So I know a lot of people use two-factor authentication for their cell phones. But uh, cell phones can get spoofed all the time. It's a very common and easy way for hackers to hack through your, your cell phone and get their authenticator and then you're good to go. Um, it's more difficult for them to do that if you actually have a 2FA set up either on another device or phone or whatever, and you're good to go in that regard. And it also protects you from scams. So if somebody says, hey, transfer uh, money from A to Z and you have two-factor authentication set up where the only way you can send cryptocurrency out of your wallet is if you put in your your authenticator you can say hey you're from coinbase so you can put in the authentication you're good to go um, or if you accidentally give somebody your password or you leave your computer unattended and you have your password saved which i do not recommend doing ever uh, but if you do end up doing that and somebody gets onto your system and they try to send money from a to b they can't do that without your two-factor authentication code now, I know people are going to say, what two FA should I use? And the easiest one to use and the one that I've been using tried and true for years and years and years is Google Authenticator. Um, and I will say a best practice for that. We're going to go back to safety deposit boxes. So once you set up your two-factor authentication for all of your exchanges or anything that you're using, email, whatever, I have 2FA on all my emails. I have 2FA on everything because it's, it's a way for you to be able to get hacked and it's a great way for you to protect yourself. It's not 100% secure because if they have access to your 2FA, then they can get in. But it's another layer of security that people overlook that really benefits them. Yeah. So what you do after you've got your 2FA is you can actually export your master QR list into a big QR code. And then you can fold that up and put it in a safety deposit box and store it in your bank. So that way, if you ever lose your phone or your tablet or anything that you're holding your 2FA on, um, you can just go back to the bank, rescan that with a new Google Authenticator, and you have all of your stuff back. Otherwise, you have to go through the painstaking process of uh, removing your two-factor authentication through all of your exchanges and showing copious amounts of identification to prove you are who you say you are and hope that you get back into your crypto within a month. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, <clears throat> Jess says, to combat people seeing what crypto you hold, is it a thing to send from a hold wallet to a transaction wallet, or is that not possible? It doesn't matter, make a difference. Yeah, so you just, you, when you transfer it from a hold wallet to different, I have tons and tons and tons of wallets, so I just disperse it, right? So there's one main wallet, which nobody knows what it is, and then it gets dispersed to other wallets. And since everything is anonymous, no one knows if those wallets are wallets that I control or if those are wallets that somebody else controls, they're just dispersed. So that's kind of how that works. Michael said, any 2FA apps that you would stay away from? Um, that's a good question. I'm gonna let you answer that one, Joe. Um, I don't really, I mean, Authy is kind of not really great. 
Um, That's A U T H Y. I've used them once. Yeah. I agree. They weren't awesome. Yeah, uh, they, they, they kept having weird breaks, and then I'd have to reinstall and refix it. But just, you know, Google Authenticator is the one that I use, and I don't really mess with any of the others. Yeah, and again, you can do Microsoft, you could do Google. I mean, it, it's kind of whatever. Um, but it's it's a it's just an app that you download. It's the easiest thing in the world, honestly. It is so so simple, right? To you get a QR code, scan it, boom, you're good, and it has like a six digit code that changes every twenty seconds. Um. Yeah, so the thing is, team, what we're trying to say and what we've said very well so far is do your absolute best not to get scammed in the first place because if you do, the chances that you're going to get your money back are very, very, very small. Um, now, if an exchange gets hacked, Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, and a few others, if an ex exchange gets hacked, so not your exchange, not your wallet, but their, their exchange, their main holdings, their server, if that gets hacked and some money gets stolen and some of that money happened to be yours because you left it online, right? They can and might and should and probably will reimburse that money through the FDIC insurance. But that's only up to a quarter million. So something to keep in mind. Am I saying that right, Joe? Yeah, you are. Yeah, um, it, it's very rare for the exchanges to get hacked and for, the, for things to get stolen. Generally what happens is there's there's something called an API, which is um, a, a, basically a direct input link that goes from the exchange wallet to uh, the wallet of the network. If they don't set that up correctly, or um, the network itself has poor performance, or they didn't they they just rush through it, that could end up uh, being a possibility where your stuff is scraped. But I've never seen um, any of these major exchanges get hacked, and even if they do, it's probably you don't you probably don't even know know it and they just put that money right back yeah um you know it's just one of those things where they don't want they don't want that that type of press anyway so they're no. going to make sure that that just gets fixed and goes away yeah um, but some of these smaller ones like kucoin that you mentioned did get hacked and they lost a lot of money um they did reimburse most of that money back to uh the people that were on it but these random exchanges that are not uh insured so to speak um are the ones that i generally don't put a lot of money on like kucoin i have like a thousand bucks on it like if I, if, if I lose it oh well but you know coinbase pro and kraken pro those bigger companies i have a larger amount of money on there that i'm trading with and i have a little bit more confidence that things are going to be fine uh, another thing to protect yourself that's really important especially when you're dealing with exchanges is setting up whitelists on your wallets so in uh coinbase and i know kraken can also do this you can set up a whitelist of wallets that you're saying, I whitelist this. This wallet is okay to go from this address to this address. And if someone tries to just input a random address, they have to wait 48 to 72 hours before it's whitelisted um, in order for them to be able to send that transfer, which gives you time if you're hacked to say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't authorize this wallet on my whitelist. I'm going to delete this and change my password and recheck my two-factor authentication and all that stuff and, and give your chance uh, self to like protect yourself from this. Yep. That's very important. Yeah, and the reason Joanne and Jess that were saying to use like an actual app for 2FA when you're logging into, let's just say Coinbase Pro or Coinbase, you know, for simplicity's sake, because again, it's very, very easy. Step one, you download the app. Step two, you open your camera. Step three, you scan your QR code. Step four, you're done. This takes like all of 16 seconds. Text messages, yes, they are a little bit on the safe side, but if you use just strictly text to FA, the challenge with that is then a text message can be intercepted, rerouted, your SIM card can be damaged, hacked into. There's a lot of ways to intercept it. And I'm not saying that that's, likely but it can happen and this is again one extra layer because then they would have to have your phone and the login to your phone right so then it takes a few additional steps you have to log into your phone open your phone access your 2fa have it in front of your computer the exact same time and it becomes a little bit more challenging yep yeah Faez says do you guys know of any brokers similar to coinbase pro with oco orders in canada most brokers don't have OC orders yet in, in, the crypto, in the crypto world. I haven't found one personally. Um, Binance, dude, is really solid, in my personal opinion. And uh, Binance works great in Canada and Australia and all kinds of places. That's my answer. <laughs> so, yeah, and it does have OCO, I think. 
It's someone told me they had they used OCO on Binance. Did they? Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. That might be well, another US Binance. The, oh, the, well, yeah. Our Binance. <laughs> oh, shoot. Good point. I need to move to Canada. Um, any other questions, team? We got another 14 minutes together, so I'm not going to hold you longer than an hour. But if you have questions, you have arguably one of the smartest individuals of all time in the crypto space on a free webinar for you to ask a question into. Trey says, can I tax, sorry, can tax tracking software expose you to risk? Good question. Um, so the only tax tracking software I use is Co uh, Cointracker.io and it uses a read only uh, API. So it doesn't actually change any of your um, it doesn't actually change any of your, uh, your access to anything. Like it can't make an order. It can't remove something. It can't do any of that. So the only thing that you have to really, uh, that it has access to is like reading the data on all of your wallets and then taking that data and then putting it into a nice little clean Excel spreadsheet for you to be able to do your taxes with. Yeah. Um, Trace says, are you familiar with a cointing? <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a cute pun. That sounds um, <laughs> so rough. I don't know if I would do that. One. I wouldn't do that one. A cointing dot. Uh, I've never heard of it. I'd have to research I've that one. Yeah. That's, it sounds sketchy though. <laughs> uh, it sounds sketchy. Ross says, we'll be able to watch this recording again. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, man, that's a, that's a super good question. So Lola, just what you asked, uh, tax crypto tax software, coin tracker.io. I've used it. Joseph used it. The turbo tax. Yep. So that's, that would be my recommendation. We're not getting paid to recommend them, although we should, uh, we should. <laughs> Jess says, were you out here trying to help us by repetitively mentioning staking polka dot and cosmos? Yep. Bob says, how much do you consider to be too much money on an exchange? Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a tough question to answer. I mean, it depends on what you're doing oh. on the exchange. If you're trading on it, you know, that, that number changes. Um, if you're just buying it for long-term, the thing is, is if you're buying it for long-term, so if you're a smart investor and you want to dip your toes in cryptocurrency and you have an order set up for a hundred dollars a week, for, um, you know, indefinitely till the end of time on whatever crypto that you're trying to buy. When you get to certain, you know, thresholds, think about it. Like, what is your pain threshold hat? Like, if you lost, if it goes up to $10,000 and you lost that money, how would you feel? Is that something that you would be like, this is going to wreck my life and I can't stand it? Then take that $10,000 and move it to cold storage. If you're the individual where you, you have a little bit more comfortability on, on risk management and you're like, okay, I want to trade it a little bit too, if I have to, and uh, maybe sell it if it starts dipping and then rebuy lower and I'm more comfortable at 50,000, then maybe it's 50,000. It's really, it's up to you. It's, it's your, your pain threshold on if something were to happen, um, where would you be comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's a good question, brother. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it, it's, it's variable. I mean, I know the Winklevoss, a few other people, I mean, they get, I mean, people have hundreds of millions on an exchange sometimes like the big, the whales essentially, but they're, they're going to take it offline and yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Any other questions team? Justin says, how long does it take to move Ethereum and Bitcoin from cold storage minutes? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take long. Just as long yeah. as you have everything plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Lola says, do you have your seed phrases on paper or metal sheets? Ooh, good question. Uh, paper. paper for me. Paper. Yeah. Paper for me. I did it kind of cool though. I wrote it in like papyrus with like, with like a really nice fountain pen, you know, just to try to, I, I just want to be cool in the moment, but. I just yeah. printed it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Troy says, if a wallet is compromised, does the scammer get an alert if you use it again? They can set one up, yeah. Yeah, I won't see why not. Yeah. Yep. Um, Archimedes says, great content. Thanks both for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Hope I said that right. Hope I got close. You did. 
Beautiful. All right, team. Well, again, our goal is just to pour into you on this. We don't have, there's no sales pitch. We just, we just love you all. The sales pitch is this though. Uh, last time Joseph and I were on a webinar talking about crypto was 255% ago. So just FYI. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we, like to time, we, we like to time our webinars poignantly. Michael says, do you use any hot storage outside of what brokers offer? Oh, good one. Yes. Um, I use blockchain.com and blockchain.com uh, has several different, um, so blockchain.com is really cool because it has an explorer built into it and it has several different main cryptos that you can transfer your stuff to. And it also has two-factor authentication with email authentication on top of it. So not only, that's what I love about that hot storage. So you put in your password, it goes, put in your 2FA, you put in your 2FA, then it says verify via email that you are who you say you are. After you put in your 2FA, you verify your email, you go back, it says, okay, put your 2FA in one more time. You put your 2FA in one more time, and then it gives you access to your wallet. So as far as like hot storage go goes, like it is the most legit hot storage wallet I've ever seen. And it's an actual explorer. Uh, those of you that don't know what that means, that means you can actually explore a transaction from A to B. So if I send uh, cryptocurrency to Jeremy for singing karaoke, um, he can uh, he can actually check on the explorer and see the transfer from A to B. Mm, that'd be nice. I would love to get paid to sing karaoke. Um, yeah, me too. Richard says transaction fees for wallet to wallet, cold to hot storage cost for that. There are transaction fees, uh, Richard, for sometimes both. It can depend on a lot of different factors. Um, generally, they're a little bit on the lower side, but what's your take on that, Musso? It, it just really depends on the network, uh, how busy the network is. So but best practice if you're, if you're trying to save money on transferring from A to B is transfer on off times. When everybody is off work, that's not the best time to transfer because everybody's trying to tr do transfers and the network will be clogged and you'll have to pay more more transaction fees right so um if there is less uh less activity going on like you know eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night whatever your time zone is then the transaction fees will be much less and then it won't cost you as much to do the transfer that's the best i can give you on that yeah totally middle of the night daniel yeah, I mean, it, it can depend, uh, but 11 p.m. Eastern is not a bad time when people are starting to get asleep. No, that's good. Do you convert? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Archimedes says, any other training resources with you guys to look out for? Yes, uh, for sure, man. I mean, we're always going to be educating the world on cryptos. I'm going to make sure that I put Joseph on the pedestal that he deserves, and uh, you know, hopefully he'll give me a handout when he's up there, but yeah, man, we're, we're going to always do all kinds of things. We have a great program on cryptocurrencies that we taught together back in February. Uh, it's on reallifetrading.com and you can click on cryptos. But yeah, man, we'll, we'll be providing much more uh, information to everyone who's here and stuff later. But again, there's no real follow-up. We just love you. That's pretty much the follow-up. Uh, Nick says, does the RLT crypto course cover a lot of what you're going over? Not really, no. This, is, this was a more of a specified program we do cover some of it we cover hot storage and cold storage and 2fa and we we do this is more in depth i think the one that we did was probably 30 minutes max so yeah simply simply yeah, put yeah. man it's not 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 too bad all right everyone we love you thanks for being here that's it i hope we provided value hope you found this beneficial and useful protect yourself protect your assets and um just be, be wise about this, okay? <laughs> we want you to keep your money. If you are in doubt, message either myself or Joseph. Shoot me an email or a text message. You know how to get a hold of us. We're all around the internet. You can find us. And uh, I appreciate you all. So thank you. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade it. Bye. Bye.